I'm here today with our good friend, Glenna Snellis. Her new book, I Wonder, Exploring God's Grand Glory, an Illustrated Bible, releases today. So many congratulations, Glennis. I'm so, so happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Glennis was born and raised in a little village in northern England. She's the author of multiple children's books, including the best-selling Twas the Evening of Christmas and the popular series Love Letters from God and Snuggle Time. Her writing reflects a deep passion for helping children discover joy in the world. Glennis lives in Michigan with her husband, David. And she's been a featured speaker at our Writing for Your Life Children's Book Conferences. And we have another one of those coming up in October. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, and you can learn more about Glennis and her book at glennisnellis.com. So Glennis, congratulations on such a beautiful book. Oh, thank you, Brian. I know I'm, I'm so excited to, yeah, introduce it to the world. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about you doing that, too. <laughs> Just so wonderful. Um, but before we get into that, maybe you could share with folks a little bit more about your background and, you know, kind of the other books that you've written. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Well, um, first of all, you can tell from my accent, I'm not American. I, I was born and raised in England and lived there till I was 40 um, and then came to the United States with my husband, who is a pastor. Um, but in England, I was a teacher, a primary school teacher. And so. Uh, reading books, literature, um, children's picture books and writing, you know, is something I've always um, loved. But it wasn't till we came to the United States that I started um, seriously looking at the possibility of writing children's books that came through. Um, I was the children's ministry director alongside my husband, who was the pastor in a little church here. And that's where I actually started writing Bible stories for my teachers to use. I wrote a little curriculum, um, like a rotation Sunday school curriculum, and then other churches started using it. And that's really what opened the door for me into writing. So my first book was published in 2014, seven years ago, with Zonda Kids, and it's called Love Letters from God. And that was a book of 18 Bible stories with lift the flap love letters from God inside where you can write the child's name. And then that was just the springboard for me and somehow turned into a series. <laughs> yeah, we, we brought well, it was out so popular. I mean the first one was so popular that that's why they turned it into a series. <laughs> right. And right, I know, but I, I guess I hadn't envisioned that that would happen. You know, I just thought Maybe I can write a book, and that was a lot of hard work. And finally, when it was published, you know, I'm like, yay, I've arrived. I've done it. I've written a book. And I don't know really how, how it happened. But, yeah, we brought out Easter love letters from God and Christmas love letters and one for girls, girls love letters from God. So that's really where I started writing was retelling the, the wonderful stories of the Bible. And then after that, I brought out a little series of board books called Snuggle Time, again with Zonda Kids, Snuggle Time Psalms, Snuggle Time Prayers, several others. Then I became published with Beaming Books with Little Mole. Little Mole Finds Hope and Little Mole's Christmas Gift. And he's back next year with Little Mole Goes to School. Yay. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah. I know I'm excited to see that book. Then let's see. Yeah, then I'm also published. So that did I say that's with Beaming Books? Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm also published with Our Daily Bread out of Grand Rapids. And with them, I have a little board book series called Good News. Good News, God Made You. Good News, It's Easter. Good News, It's Christmas. And again, next year, there are two more in that series. Good News, God Loves You. And Good News, It's Creation. So... It's been kind of a wild ride <laughs> for me. And, yeah, it's just a huge blessing to be able to write children's books and launch them into the world. Well, you can really tell that you feel that way, um, you know, by your enthusiasm and, you know, your love for this whole genre. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to also say that you're one of the absolute best at sharing your platform with other authors. Um, you know, you don't just promote your own work. You promote theirs, too. And they're, you know... I, I love the degree of support overall within the Christian children's book 
community. But mm -hmm. you know, you exemplify that more than anyone. Well, just because Brian, we've all been at the start of our careers, you know, fighting all that self doubt and wondering why we're doing this and if we can make it and if our words will ever make a difference. I was there, you know. In fact, that first book I quit, I gave up halfway through because I thought, this is ridiculous. I'll never be able to write a children's book. <laughs> you know, and with, so without the support and encouragement, first of all, from my husband, who was the one who made me finish that first book, but just from other authors, other people who helped me along. And so I think that's what we're meant to do anyway in life, especially as Christians, you know, we're meant to help each other along. And I think I shared with you when we chatted last time that I saw a wonderful meme. It was a candle and it says, your candle will never go out if, when you use it to light another person. Oh, uh, really? You know? Yeah, and that's how I really see it, you know, that um, – it's a huge privilege and a blessing for me to be able to be an author. So why would I not use what I know um, to support other people? So in this together, that's my mantra. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you just, like I said, you do that so incredibly well. You're a wonderful role model for, for everyone. So oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so let's get into the new book. You know, I said earlier, it's called I Wonder. Um mm -hmm. Exploring God's Grand Story, an Illustrated Bible. So what inspired you to do that book? Well, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you the cover if you haven't seen it. Isn't it so, if, I think. It's I so beautiful. Can, I know. It's, the whole um, book is so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and I can't take any credit for that cover, you know. <laughs> I only wrote the words. This is illustrated by Alessandra Fusi, and we can talk about her in a minute, but yeah, I wonder exploring God's grand story. So the inspiration came from um, actually a curriculum that I just fell in love with was introduced when um, several years ago in one of the Sunday schools that I was working in, and it's called Godly Play. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so you've heard of it. Oh, yes. Yeah, Brian McLaren actually was telling me about that and some of the people who were involved in it. Right, right. Godly Play is such a wonderful curriculum used widely in the United Methodist Church, um, also was introduced in England where, where churches are using it there. Basically, the premise of Godly Play is that we, as the educators, um, the storytellers, if you like, we're not there to teach children about the Bible or teach them about God. We are here. Our role is to accompany them along that spiritual journey because children actually already know God, you know, um, and quite often know God better than adults do. So, yeah, our role is just to gently accompany them. And a big component of godly play is a wondering element mm. whereby at the end of the story, so the stories, the Bible stories are typically told using small manipulatives, like very often the storyteller might use um, a sand pit maybe if he or she is telling the story, say, of Abraham and Sarah journeying across the desert, and they'll have little wooden figures and so the story is told usually from memory by the storyteller with these visuals. Sometimes it might be um, just pictures. But um, so the children are just engaged in the story, in the retelling. And at the end of it, they're invited to just think about these wondering questions. And so it's not like and this was just a game changer for me in my own uh, walk as an educator because coming from public school teaching I was always objective driven you know so like if I was teaching the alphabet the child will learn the letter a the child will know the sound a ah, you know and that's very easily measured once they know a and a ah, you check it off you move to b and I was when I first started teaching in Sunday schools, that's what kind of drove me. What will the child learn about God? 
you know, oh, yeah, we're learning about David and Goliath. The child will learn that God is bigger than anyone or anything. That's a great objective, you know. Um, but really, when I came across Godly Play, it kind of turned everything I'd learned about teaching children. It kind of turned it on on its head. And instead, I began to wonder, where's the room for the Holy Spirit? You know, maybe I can't measure what children are going to learn in this lesson because God is mysterious and works that way. And very often children who, who are just like sponges, they're taken in without us even knowing. So the wondering questions are not closed. It's not like, okay, who can remember? How many disciples did Jesus have? <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead, what you do is, because that's just 12, you're right, and you move on, you know, end of, end of lesson. But wondering enables the lesson to continue in ways that you don't even see or realize. So instead of asking, so how many disciples did Jesus have? You might ask something like, I wonder how it felt to be a disciple of Jesus. You know, and, and you just let it sit in the silence and... So you can't measure how God is working in the child's life, but you just trust that God is. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just loved that whole element of let's let the Holy Spirit take charge, you know. Um, and so that really became the inspiration behind the I Wonder Bible. I thought I would just love to retell the Bible stories, and after each one, let's include some I wonder questions that there's no right or wrong answer. They just invite children um, on this mysterious journey of thinking about God and how God is at work in their lives. Yeah. That's what I think is so powerful about it. It you know, kind of allows them to think, not just be told, you know. Right, right. Not, not exactly. be told what to think. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because that's just, I don't want to do that anymore. You know, that's what drove me early on as a teacher. I wanted, I wanted kids to know everything I knew about God. Um, but now I just, I just want to walk alongside them as they discover God for themselves. You know, so so I hope that. I wonder, will I encourage children to do that? So um, the book includes 30 stories, almost mm -hmm. evenly split between the Old Testament and New Testament. Uh, was mm -hmm. that intentional or, you know, kind of like more generally, how do you decide what stories that you wanted to include? Yeah. So right from the beginning, Zonda Kids, who are the publisher, they said, we're going to do uh, 30 stories. So, you know, that was, okay, I've got 30 stories to work with. Well, the Bible is so full <laughs> of so many wonderful stories. That was kind of hard to, okay, I'm going to narrow it down. So I guess what I did was, in a way, I cheated with some of the stories. I kind of, let's give you an example. I kind of rolled this, uh, what might be in another Bible, what might be a few stories, I kind of rolled them into one. So in a way, I cheated. But, for example, the story of David when I wrote um, I Wonder About David. So it begins when David is a shepherd boy in the fields and and it talks about, you know, David wrote, is it Psalm 8 where it says, who is man that you are mindful of him when I think about the stars and everything. So I was thinking about David as a shepherd boy, must have lay down in the fields and seen those stars and that those shepherd boy times must have become his inspiration for writing those psalms later on, you know, and like the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I kind of, and then of course, David and Goliath, you, you, you have to include that. But all that, David is a shepherd boy, David as a psalmist, David fighting Goliath. I kind of rolled it all into one <laughs> story. So that was kind of how I got around some of it. Or like, or like the story of um, the last days of Jesus' life. You know, there are so many elements of that. The Mary who washed Jesus' feet and the Last Supper and 
Gethsemane and the crucifixion, I kind of put it all together. So the stories are a little bit longer than you might find in other children's storybook Bibles, which is why I feel on the back of the book it says for children four through eight, but I would extend that. I might say like five through ten, or, mm-hmm. you know. I was wondering about that. Yeah. But in terms of the stories that are included, well, you know, to some extent you have to, you have to include the iconic Jonah, you know, and Daniel in the lion's den. I know they have to be included in any children's storybook Bible. But this one, what I tried to do, because it's got that whole wondering component, I also tried to include stories that might not typically be in a children's storybook Bible, but ones that really do make me wonder. For example, the story of uh, Jacob and Esau when, when Jacob has cheated his brother and is terrified of meeting him again. And actually Esau gives him, gives him a great big hug, you know, and Jacob looks at him and says, I think I, I just saw God's face in you. Well, you know how that's so, I mean, powerful, right? That's so mysterious and powerful. And I'm just going to show you that picture because it's one of my favorite ones in the book um, of this idea, maybe I can see God's face in others. So this is a little peek at what that looks like. There's Jacob looking into Esau's face, and I wonder if I can see God's face in others, you know. Mm-hmm. And then another one that really makes me wonder is the story of Elijah in the cave when God comes not in the wind or the earthquake or the fire, but God comes in that whisper. And it's like, wow, you know, that, and I guess normally you wouldn't find that story in a children's Bible, but I had to include it because it's just really mysterious to me anyway, (laughs) you know, that that God comes in the whisper. Yeah. Um, The other one, so wondering stories were um, a driving factor for me. The other thing I wanted to be sure to do is to include the women where I could, the Good. women of the Bible, because as you know, they're underrepresented. And so I took, instead of writing about Moses, I mean, he's in there because he's a pivotal figure, but I wrote it from Miriam's perspective. So it's I wonder about Miriam. Mm. Because when you think about that, she is such a pivotal woman in that story. She was the one at the banks of the River Nile watching over her baby. And she was the one at the banks of the Red Sea cheering her brother on. So I just found, I just thought it was a nice way to write Moses' story from the point of view of his sister. Sure, yeah. Sure. yeah. So, yeah, I've tried to include women where I could and, like in the New Testament, the story of the lady in the crowd, you know, the one who has been ill for several years and she grabs Jesus' hem. And I don't know, there's something powerful, Brian, about the Bible. When you go to rewrite these stories, you see things that you haven't seen before, even though you've read them several times. And so what I saw in that, and the reason I wanted to include it, is that In that story, Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house to heal Jairus' daughter. And Jairus was a very important man, you know, in that story. But the, the story just spoke to me that this woman was equally as important as Jairus was. And that's why Jesus stopped and knew that um, she needed him. So... I guess those were my two driving things, stories that make you wonder and um, make sure to include the important women of the Bible. Very cool. Very cool. Well, mm-hmm. I'm glad you had those as priorities. Mm-hmm. So earlier on, you mentioned the illustrator, Alessandra Fusi. Um, mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about her and, you know, how, how she worked on the book with you. Yeah, I mean... It's a fascinating part of the whole publishing process that as the author, you generally don't have a choice about who your illustrator will be. I mean, sometimes 
Zonda Kids or my other publishers will say, we're looking at these two, what do you think? Or do you, do you have a vision for how the illustrations might look? But generally speaking, it's their job. I've learned, to, even though it's scary, I've learned to trust them that they're going to pick the perfect illustrator. And they did. So Alessandra Fusi is Italian, I believe. She lives in Rome. And so we've not had too much contact, except I know she's super excited about the book release today. So as soon as I saw, well, the cover, as soon as I saw the cover, I just fell in love. Because my one thing was, I want this Bible to encourage kids to wonder. So therefore, if the illustrations can also encourage kids to wonder, you know, that will be a great thing. So, and I think she really did that. The illustrations are just so, they're, they're so colorful. They're so vibrant. Um, they're just beautiful. I know, I know. So I showed you the one of East. Here's the one of Moses on the bank of the Red Sea. Um, so, yeah, she just did a fabulous job. Yeah, no, that's always so lovely to see. And one of the things I was r really, quite frankly, shocked by is the price of this is relatively low for a beautiful, full-color, hardcover book. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I was really glad to see that. I agree. It's, it's a fabulous price. Yeah, because, I mean, it's 200 pages. Um, and as you say, it's hardcover and it's just gorgeous quality. So, yeah, it's a fabulous price. And Baker Book House in Grand Rapids, if people are interested in supporting an independent bookstore, they have it 25% off. Christian Book has it for 30% off. So, yeah, buy your books. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's so good to hear. So I know in addition to the book itself, you've got some supplementary resources for parents and children's ministries. Is that correct? I do. Yes. Because that teacher background in me for quite <laughs> a few, quite a few of my titles, I've been able to write free downloadable activity packs. And so the one for I Wonder will be available any day now. As soon as it's ready, I'll be um, sending it out on social media. But that is like 35 pages there are coloring pages there are uh, little activities for younger kids and older kids there's an ex a sample lesson plan I took the creation story and wrote a simple like Montessori based hmm. lesson plan because the Montessori based curriculum is very in keeping with godly play you know where you let the child lead so there's a sample lesson, there's little figures, characters from the book that you can cut out, laminate, put on popsicle sticks, you know, for kids to play with. Oh, but what I'm really excited, yeah, there's book plates and bookmarks, but what I'm really excited about is there are 40 wondering questions that parents and children's ministers can download, print on cardstock, cut them out, and there's even a little box template that you can put them in. And those are designed like for families to use at meal times or on car rides, you know, um, pick an I wonder question and wonder about that. So uh, okay. I'm really excited about that that's, resource. That's very cool. So are links to all of those on your website? They will be, yes. As soon as that's available, I'll put a link on my website. Yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. And you expect mm -hmm. that to be relatively soon, sounds like. Yeah. I think within the week, I know that I, so I wrote it and then Zonda Kids design, design team put it all together. And I know they're working hard getting that ready. So I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Good, good, good. So for the people that are you know watching this later or listening to it later, um, September 21st is the book launch date. So uh, yep. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> September 21st. I've been waiting for it a long time. <laughs> yeah. What are your hopes for the book? Where do you think it'll go? Well, you know, I really hope that whoever reads it, wherever they read it, whether it, it's in a family setting or in a ministry setting, I really hope that it, it will touch hearts and cause children to wonder more about who God is and where God is and what God looks like. And most importantly, Brian, how they are part of God's grand story. 
because we're all part of God's grand story in whatever way, you know. And that's how the book ends. Well, it ends with Lydia at the at the riverside, but um, the very last page is, I wonder about you, you know. Um, and it just I says... I saw that in an epilogue, you know. That's really cool that you did. Right, right. right. Um, the little epilogue that, yeah, that because that's where... I, you know, I think God wants a response from whoever reads the Bible, whoever reads scripture. God God wants a response. And so I wanted to sort of issue that invitation. I wonder about you and where your part is in God's grand story. Because no matter how young or old or where we are, we all have a part to play. So I hope that will invite children and anyone who's reading it to to wonder where their part is, yeah. One thing I'm kind of curious about, I have no idea how this works in children's books. Do you think if the book does well, there'll be a chance for translations into other languages? There already has been. Ah, good. <laughs> I know. No, that's a complete first for me because I have had other books, like the love letter books were, that was crazy exciting when I got a letter from Zonda Kids saying we've just signed a contract for it to be published in Korean. So, yeah, so I've had several books like Korean, French, Italian, Lithuanian, the latest Chinese. Um, but this book, yeah, I got an email from Zonda Kids and it said, congratulations, because I wonder is just going to, is going to be published in German. <laughs> that's a, German, that's a complete first. But I have another picture book, Brian, which is called The Wonder That Is You. Okay. And and I thought they were talking about that because I Wonder hasn't been published yet, right? Um, and I said, oh, that's so exciting. And then I went back and I thought, just a minute, they're not talking about The Wonder That Is You. They're <laughs> talking about I Wonder. <laughs> It's already going to be in German before it, it's released here. So, wow. yeah. So that really is exciting for me. And, yes, I that would be wonderful if it were, were to be translated into different languages. I really have to believe that it will be. I mean, it's kind of a, a groundbreaking approach and uh, so beautifully done. Uh, mm -hmm. i got to believe that they'll want to get more distribution than just English speakers. Well, I hope so. We'll see. <laughs> good, good, good. So you touched on this a little bit, but what's next, you know, uh, in terms of future books that you can talk about? Yeah, so I mentioned about Little Mole next year, and I have another Snuggle Time, Snuggle Time Easter coming next year. But before any of those, I, my next book is publishing October 26th, um, and it's this one. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, it was the season of Advent. And so this is the third in the Twas series. Mm -hmm. Twas the evening of Christmas was first, and then Twas the morning of Easter. And Twas the season of Advent, published by Zonda Kids, same fabulous illustrator, Elena. Oh, really? Selva. Oh, good. Yeah, Elena Selvanova. This one, uh, this is my advanced reader copy so it's softback but it's hardback and this is 25 devotions for families from december the 1st to december 25th and each of them begins with a familiar um, poem a little rhyme in the similar vein of the clement seymour classic so oh, wow. this one publishes yeah october 26th but look at that so that's kind of what Beautiful, beautiful. What each day looks like. Yeah, I'm really excited for that one. And also this one will have one of those downloadable activity packs with a an advent countdown calendar. There'll be activities and discussion questions for each day and then an advent calendar that can be downloaded, cut out, and little pictures to hang on the tree. So it's keeping me busy. <laughs> yes, I. my goodness. I mean, you've got so many um, good things going. I mean, and to have one book come out in September, another book can come out in October. I mean, that's pretty, pretty crazy <laughs> uh, from a marketing perspective. It keeps you a little busy, huh? <laughs> it keeps me very busy. I know, but, but I have a wonderful launch team. I have wonderful people around me that are helping me without all that. So yeah, it's a really exciting season for me. 
Well, the um, Advent book is going to be coming out right in the midst of our online children's book conference. So that's, that's going to be exciting. Yes, that's right. That's I'll help right. You get some exposure, you know, for that. And uh, you yeah. know, we'll do another separate interview just like this, you know, about the new book when it launches. That will be great, Brian. Thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. So um, I guess, you know, the main place that people should go, you know, to learn more is, is your website, glennisnellist.com. That's right. Yep. Glennisnellist.com. I'm the only Glennis Nellist in the whole wide world. <laughs> Lucky you, right? <laughs> well, I used to hate my name because it rhymes. <laughs> well, if you were Mary like Smith, you know, or something like that, you know, uh, that wouldn't do well for a domain name. Uh, for I know. Time. But yeah. Glennis Nellist, I mean, is very unique and it's, memorable. It's, and so it's uh, fabulous for an author. I'm easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Glennis, congratulations on yet another outstanding contribution to, you know, the spiritual lives of children, um, such an important area to start with. And you've, you know, been feeding uh, a lot of nourishment, you know, to that audience. So thank you so much for that and for this new book. Oh, thank you so much, Brian. And thanks for having me today. Our pleasure. And, uh, you know, good luck with the entire launch. Thank you.